All right, let's talk about ESLint. So we've talked in a previous video about JSLint, which was a website, jslint.com, where you could copy and paste your JavaScript code, run the linting process, and then have that code validated, tested, and check to see if it meets the various JavaScript standards. ESLint does the same thing. It is another JavaScript linter, but this one is designed to be installed with NPM, so you need to have Node and NPM installed on your machine. Once you do, then you can install ESLint. ESLint.org is the website where you can come. You don't need to go here for downloading, but it does have some useful guides here. So there's a getting started, configuration, command line interface, and the rules. These are great resources. There is uh, a video on the home page here for the getting started. This is uh, actually the introductory video for a ESLint course that's available on Pluralsight.com, which is a good course if you have the chance to take that. So we are going to basically be following the instructions that they have here. We want to install ESLint on our system. So I have a project folder here I called Lintaroo, and I have got two folders inside there, one called JS and one called Original, as you can see over here. Inside of each one I've got a JavaScript file. Just inside the original is the original JavaScript file, and to start with, inside the JavaScript folder is just another copy of the same file. They're both called mysample.js. I just wanted to keep an original copy so I could repeat this or I could compare the two of them. All right, so if you've installed anything ever with Node and NPM, you know that you can do Node or NPM install, and then we've got a choice. We can at this point say install ESLint. That will install it in the current folder that I'm in, inside the Lintaroo folder. If I add the dash G option, this makes it global. It will install it global so I can use it from anywhere. I can use the ESLint command from anywhere. Difference between the two of them is not great, just global, you can install it once, use it everywhere. Uh, if I install it without the dash G, then this is simply going to be installed locally. I will have my config files locally. Everything I do will be done within this one project. So I'm going to go ahead and do it globally. Hit enter. This is going to install ESLint globally. There we go. And we can see by the message version 4.6.1 is the version that was installed here. This is the location where the ESLint JavaScript was installed. Now inside my folder, if I now list everything, you can see there's still nothing except for the JS and the original folder. I haven't said that I want to do anything with ESLint yet. I haven't set up any kind of settings files. Now there is a configuration file with ESLint if I use the dash dash init option, this is going to allow me to initialize the project and it's going to create a settings file inside of here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We can always undo this later. When you say init, it's going to ask you a series of questions if you pick this first option, which is what I normally do. Am I using ECMAScript 6, ES6? Yes, I am. Modules, no. Where am I going to be running it? I'm going to hit A to toggle all to say potentially both in the browser and on the command line with Node. Not using common JX, I'm not using JSX, so I'm not using React. And do I use tabs or spaces for my indents? Well, I typically use tabs. You can use spaces, there's nothing wrong with that. And for my quotations, am I using double or single? Well, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to say single for this one. And line endings, Unix style, because I'm on OS X right now. And we'll say yes, we will require semicolons. And my config file is going to be in JSON. There we go. Now this 
right here, eslintrc.json. This is the config file that has been created. If I do ls-la again, there it is. That is the config file that has been created for me inside of here. If I refresh my file tree, there it is. This is the config file that I got by doing eslint dash dash init. So it's using the eslint recommended settings. So there's a whole bunch of rules that you can configure for your linting. I'm using the recommended set. And then this set of rules right here, this object that's wrapped around all these elements, this is a series of overrides to those defaults. We can override others, we can add other settings in here. Not every rule is included in this list, so we can add additional ones here. ENV and rules are probably going to be the two most common things that you end up edit in here. ENV is the environment. We're running it in browser, we're running it in node, and ES6, I said yes. Remember the questions that I was answering here? Well, that's what these environmental variables are using, my answers to those questions. And then this is the set of rules. So I'm saying for quotation marks, they should be single. If they're not, this is going to be an error. Now, each of these settings in here, I've got error, 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 error. We could say that this is a warning, or we could be saying that this is turned off. We're not checking for semicolons. That's what the three possible values for all of these rules that ESLint is going to use. We can set them to error, warn, or off. Or you can actually use the numbers 0, 1, and 2. 0 being off, 1 being worn, 2 being error, but I think it's a little bit more, uh, a little less error prone if you were to write the full word out here. It's easier to read and figure out what it is that you were intending. Okay, so we have our config file set. If you don't create this config file, another way that you can set settings for ESLint is actually by creating a package.json file. So we're still inside that linteroo folder. Let's just clear this off. Still inside that same folder, I'm going to create my package.json file. So I'm doing the npm init command, and I'm going to use the flag yes here, which is just going to take all of the default values. There we go. This is my package.json file that has been created inside my folder. If I run the ls-la command again, we can see, yep, there's the JSON file for ESLint, and here's my package.json for my project. If I open package.json, press this file tree, and I open package.json, there we are, it's the same as what was output here. We can actually add into here, into the package.json file, we can add a ESLint config section. Just like this. Now, what I put inside of here is going to be the exact same thing that is in the ESLint JSON file. If I open this up, I can just take all of this as it is come inside here, paste it, tab it once to move it over, there we go. So here is my ESLint config for the project using the exact same commands as I did inside the ESLint rc.json file. So you have two options. You can just create the package.json file with the npm init command, that's going to create it, and you can do dash dash yes to get the default, or you can go through the series of questions, or you can do eslint dash dash init to create the other file and answer all the questions. It doesn't really matter which one. It will automatically look for 
an eslintrc file and the package.json file. When you run eslint, it's going to look for one or both of these. So I don't need both. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to open up Finder, and I'm just going to delete, move to trash, that file. I don't need both, so I'm just going to stick with this eslintrc file just for the moment. Okay. Now, that's the configuration, the setup. We can come and take a look at some other settings that we can do in here later. But what we want to do inside of here is we actually want to make this thing run. So eslint is the command. You can, if you want, use the dash C. And if you had created your very own config file, some other JSON file, you can actually do this. You can say, here's the name of my config file that I want you to use for the settings. Now we're going to use the one that we already created, but that's another option is you can create just a blank one on your own, type in whatever you want. The other thing for ESLint that we need to do is I need to tell it which files I want to lint. So I can say inside my JavaScript folder there's my sample.js. This is going to run it. There we go. There were three problems found. Oh, actually, I think I've got the... Uh... Yeah, so let's uh, copy that over. That is the file that I had linted earlier. All right, so I'll save that. Run this command again. There we go. Okay, 38 problems, three errors, or 38 errors, zero warnings. This is the different level that we could set inside the setting file, error, warn, or off. These are all coming up as errors just because of the way the settings are set up. All of these things are being considered errors. Now, really cool thing about ESLint is I do not have to now go into my JavaScript files and look on line three, line three, line four, five, six, and all these other ones to find where these problems are, I can run ESLint again on the same file, but add the flag dash dash fix. I run that. There we go. It ran linting again, but all of these basic ones, it's able to actually fix those. So if I come back in here, my double quotes have been changed to single quotes, or they will as soon as I focus on here. There. There's other things that we can do with settings for white space. So we can say that, you know what, after colons inside of objects, there's supposed to be an extra space. So we can have it placing that extra space in there instead of just ignoring the white space issues. We can do things with arrow functions to require that the parameters um, passed into arrow functions have the parentheses put around them. And down here I've got no console. Those are the last three warnings. We can take a look at that. Line 16, console.log. So if I wanted, I could comment these out. This isn't something that I can fix. This is something that you really, you need to make a decision about when you're building your code. Do you want to comment those out? Do you want to remove them from your code? What do you want to do with that? It's not going to make a decision about that. Changing a quotation mark, shifting something, how many spaces or tabs it is, that's an easy fix. Adding the semicolons if they're missing is an easy fix. All right, so I will run this one more time. There we go. All right, different ones now that we've commented them out. Names is assigned a value but never used. Right here. Names. Because it was inside the console log. Same thing with replicant names and rn. They were used inside of the console.log. So we have a choice at this point on how we're going to handle that. I'm not going to get into what I want to do with this file. It's uh, this video is really just about how we can use ESLint for validating our code. OK, 
okay, back into the settings file in here. I wanted to show where we could find rules and add in a couple more rules. So back into our browser, the ESLint site. We've got getting started, configuring it is those options that we do on the command line and the env variables, the config inside package.json on the rules page. That ESLint recommended that we had inside of our settings file. If we jump back in here, this ESLint recommended. That is what we're extending. And this, on this page, anywhere you see these check marks, those are ones that are included in the ESLint recommended. Now there's going to be other ones that we want to have. There's tons and tons, as you can see, I can scroll up and down. There's quite a few. I want to find the arrow function ones. There we are. I'm going to add arrow parens into my settings. So I'm going to come back in here into my rules. I'm going to add arrow parens. But now I need to know how I'm going to do this. I can just say error, but some of these rules require extra information. So we'll come back, error prints, I'll click on it. it, takes me to the page, and it talks about using the fix, it shows you examples of what goes wrong, or what can go wrong, and then here, some examples of what we can do. So we can add additional string options, always or as needed. And then if you use as needed, we can also add an object require for block body true. I'm just going to put the always option in there, just like they're doing right here. And actually, this is another way that you can add additional requirements into your actual JavaScript file. So if there's a setting that you want to use, and it's only in one of your JavaScript files, let's say you've got four or five different JavaScript files, and you have a rule that you only want to apply in one of those files, this is what you could do. You can put a multi-line comment, start it with ESLint, and then put the rule that you want to do. You can do ESLint environmental variables, so dash env, and then add the ES6 as well. So I'm just going to add the always right here, and now this has become an array. There's multiple ones, so we're going to do this. Just format it the way the other ones have been formatted. There we go. So allow parens, error, and always come back. And, oops, back into our terminal. I'm going to remove the fix option. I just want to see this, see what it comes up with. Okay, so unexpected console statement. Those are the ones that we had before when we uncommented the three con consoles. And expected parentheses around arrow function argument on line 27 and 28. So let's jump back into that. Right here, line 27. Yep, this is being passed into the arrow function, so that wants parentheses and line 28. I'm going to put the parentheses around that. Save. Run this again. And there we go. We're back to our three console statements being an issue or an error. Okay, so hopefully that will give you enough of an insight that you can start to use. ESLint. Remember, under the user guide, getting started, configuring ESLint, command line interface, and rules, these four areas are going to be what you're using most of the time for setting up your configurations. And then you just have your terminal open, and anytime you want to check, it's ESLint, and then the path to your file. You can even do it without the file name itself. If you just put the folder name, it will run lint on everything that is inside of that folder. So if you have a whole series of JavaScript files, you can run lint on all of them all at once. All right. 
Any questions, please leave them in the comments. As always, thank you for watching.